Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Mavis and Me. Today I want to talk about a concept called the PREMAC principle. And it's something that we can use in dog training to help get behaviors that we want that our dogs don't necessarily want to do. So, Mavis is down here moaning. There she is. Hi. <laughs> um, so, the PREMAC principle basically says that higher value or higher probability behaviors will reinforce lower probability behaviors. And a really easy way to understand that is when you were a kid and maybe your mom or your grandma said, eat your vegetables if you want to have dessert, right? By eating the vegetables, that's your, your lower probability behavior, right? If you gave a kid a choice, they'd choose not to usually. Um, by, by having them eat that and then getting dessert, which is of course a higher probability behavior, you're getting what you want out of it and the kid is getting what they want out of it. And the same principle applies to dog training. With dogs, oftentimes higher probability behaviors, which we often call life rewards, which for dogs would be things like um, going outside, stepping outside the door and from inside to outside, um, going for a walk, sniffing the ground, playing with another dog, saying hi to a stranger if they're that kind of a dog, um, maybe playing with toys or uh, you know balls, things like that. Okay, those are, those are high probability behaviors. Those are things that dogs would choose to do given the choice to do them. Um, of course, low probability behaviors are things like walk next to us, don't sniff the ground when we're walking, don't drag us as we're walking, um, don't mow me down through a doorway, or don't you know jump into the car and land on me, things like that, things that we don't really want them doing. Um, so, for instance, some examples that we could have that we could ask for a behavior <laughs> um, that we want them to do so they get the behavior that they really want to do would be like sitting at the door. Before you open the door, you ask your dog to sit, you ask them to wait, you open the door, right? Now they're doing something they don't really wanna do, they just wanna dart out that door. But by letting them, okay, and release them so they can run out the door, you can reinforce this low probability behavior with a high probability behavior or a life reward, and they're more likely to wanna do that next time because they realize that there's, there's a good thing at the end of this thing they don't really wanna do. Um, some other examples would be asking your dog to walk in a heel position or loose leash if you, you know, don't really care about a heel position, just asking them not to drag you. Um, so they move forward, right? When your dog pulls on the leash, you stop, look at your dog, they look up at you, and they take a step back, you move forward again. So you're rewarding the behavior of walking with you. What's the matter? <laughs> I'm miserable. <laughs> take the vest off. <laughs> she wants to eat dinner too. Um, Another uh, example of a pre-MAC principle being used would be sitting and waiting for food. Sit and wait, put the bowl down, count to three. Okay, now you can eat, right? The dog has to sit there and do something it doesn't want to do so it can do the thing it does want to do. Other examples would be to bring the toy back or the ball back so that you can throw it again or coming when called um, so that they can be let so that they can be let go again, right? When you're in a, like say you're at a dog park or any park, I don't go to dog parks, but say you're at a park where your dog's running amok and having a great time, when you call them over, you know, come and you snap the leash on and walk away, you're basically disciplining them, right? So what you wanna do is call them over frequently. Come, good dog, go play! So that they learn that, that it's random. You don't, they don't really know when the leash is gonna be put on, but generally speaking, it ends in a happy thing and they get released again. Um, that's a good way to get your dog to have a nice strong recall, especially when they're doing something they like to do, like run around with other dogs or chase squirrels or sniff or just run for the, you know, for the fun of it. Um, by encouraging your dog to come and then rewarding it with a treat or being released again. If, if you're finally ready to go, you know, a good plan would be to catch your dog, tell it it's a really good dog, give it a couple treats as you walk away from the area and keep it motivated looking at those treats and it will forget that it was just loose and not worry about that. So next time when you take it out, it will come have a stronger recall. Basically, this, this rule comes down to, you give me what I want, and I'm gonna give you what you want. And it's creating a, a period of time where the dog has to stop and wait, and like control his, his desires so that he can get what he desires. Um, and it works out really good uh, for training things that are sometimes difficult to train because the dog just, that's not fun. What we want them to do just isn't fun sometimes, and they just don't wanna do it. Um, using these life rewards is important and you can use them to your advantage. It's important to know what your dog wants. For instance, 
Mavis doesn't want me to throw a ball. She's like, why do you keep throwing that thing if you want it so bad? You know, she doesn't want to bring it back. She doesn't want to put her mouth on it. So that's not a life reward for her. However, um, having me go, oh, you're so good and squeezing her little face and, you know, hugging her and telling her she's a good dog, for whatever reason, that's a life reward. Or um, pretty much food. Food comes down to it where that's not quite the same as a life reward, but, you know, I do make her wait for her food and, and things like that. Um, so you need to know what is a life reward for your dog so that you can figure out how to essentially manipulate those life rewards into things you can use to reinforce your training ideas. Um, and your dog won't mind. Your dog's going to love it because those low probability behaviors are actually going to become more higher probability behaviors because your dogs come to associate good things with them. So that was just a real quick video on the ideas of pre med principle. I'm going to see if I can catch a couple little videos of those so you can see what I'm talking about because um, I don't know about you I learn better from seeing than I do from listening and maybe you know if you have any ideas or comments hey leave them in the section below I love to hear from you guys and I love to answer your questions and I hope you have a good day and I'll talk to you later bye Girl. in this video Wait. my daughter uses the promise of a food reward which she throws down right there in trades for some obedience what? exercises Notice the dog doesn't go for the food. She waits for the release to get the food. Yes! Okay, good girl! <laughs> she shakes it off. Yep. Good ball. Good girl. My son's dog, Piper, loves balls more than life itself. All that little dog wants to do is go get that ball. Okay. Heel. So girl, walk. Nope. I'm asking her to stay in a general position nope. of a heel. I can't good. expect perfection because she's just not trained to that nope. point yet. Good girl. But you see she's learned that in order to move forward towards the nope. ball, she has to back back into oh. position. Losing ground. Nope. Losing ground faster. Heel. Heel. Good. Ah. Nope. On you can see the wheels really spinning good. in her head as she figures it out what she needs to do in order to get closer to that ball. Come on, heel, right there. Good. Uh -uh. Nope. Good, walk. Good knee. Wait. Finally, oh, reward. When we first got Piper, she was nearly impossible to catch once she had a hold of a ball. She wouldn't let us get near her, and she wouldn't bring the ball back. Ultimately, we taught her that in order for us to throw the ball again, she needed to drop it and come up and be caught in order for the ball to be thrown again. Asking a dog to wait before going through a doorway is safer for you and the dog, and the reward is going inside. Okay. Entering wait. and exiting elevators has the same safety concerns. The reward is going through the door. Okay. Good girl. Here, I ask Mavis for a standstay before she gets her dinner. The reward is worth the wait. Good girl.